Hello, it's Coy, and welcome to the Eclectic Cottage. Thanks for joining me today. I'm sitting in the art room and working on <laughs> the same pile of tags that I was uh, working on yesterday. I am going to back them, tags and pockets and belly bands and such. Um, but on my way into the art room, after taking care of Chi Chi, I keep walking by this blingy bag of sparkly stuff. And it looks like more fun than backing tags. So I thought I would open the bag, see what's in here, and turn on the camera to see if we might choose to, oh, oh look at that. We might choose to do something blingy together as a distraction to the tag backing chore. Not that I dislike tag backing. It's just, this looks like a little bit more fun. That's a pretty piece. This is what's catching my eye right now, I think. This is part of somebody's Christmas dress, a little girl's Christmas dress. And I took it apart last year and thought, last year I thought maybe I would use it to make a pocket, like a floating pocket. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, speaking of floating pockets, let me show you real quickly before we move on um, what we ended up with on yesterday's project. Okay, I finished these up. I haven't stuffed them yet, but the pockets are finished. They came out really super cute. I like them a lot, and there's enough for all 10 journals to have one. So I'm kind of excited about them. There. It started off with her, remember? The little girl? And they're backed. So they're, you know, you can journal on the back. And we'll stuff them with, you know, little tags and, and fun things. And uh, every journal will get one. Remember, these were from before I went away for Thanksgiving. These are finished. And there you go, a little blingy, blingy. If you're gonna bling with in your junk journal, this is the time of year to do it. What is this? Those are cute. Okay, I'm kind of getting distracted and off, uh, veering off course here, but I haven't seen this stuff since last Christmas, and it's kind of looking appealing. <laughs> That's not too Christmassy. All right, a couple little fun pieces that we can make something with. Oh, the blue one's cute. Very boho-y or Christmassy. All right. I still think This must. This was the front of the dress. The chest piece on the front of the on the front of the dress. I think there were some really cute buttons, and I removed the buttons last year. Use them for a different project. All right, so we can use that. This must have been from the same dress. That's a cute piece of trim. put this one away. We won't try to reinvent the wheel or anything, but this looks like very simple. We can make a few little 
pockets with that and some lace, how about some lace pockets? Okay. We might not get them all done here on this video. Um, what can we make our pockets out of? We used book page yesterday. That would be too busy, way too busy, yeah. Not blue. Maybe yellow. Okay, yellow is an option. I think this is an option. Neutrals. Neutral. Neutral. Okay, these are options. This is the wrong color green. That's a fall green, not a Christmas green. I don't know. It's kind of a neutral green. Okay, you're an option. You are a little too busy, I think. You are a little on the busy side. And you're the wrong color red. I don't know. Maybe not you. You. This one. Okay. I'm not hating these. This is just some papers that I had over to the left of me. They're not backed. So we might back them you know, with some, make them a little stronger. Okay, almost all of them, almost all of these work. It's Christmas time. I think I'm gonna start out easy, neutral. Okay, this is, this is one of my, I bet I use your papers in almost everything I do. A bet from to Casa de Papel. I think that's the house of paper. All right. Let me back a few of these pages. These will definitely work. And I think this will work. Before I start getting into the crazy prints, the very busy prints. Let me start here. And do we need to trim pages? No, yeah, I mean, this one needs to be trimmed. As you can see, I have no problem picking up a pair of scissors and just trimming away. I, um, I'm sure that drives some people crazy. I am not a perfectionist. It doesn't have to be 100% perfectly straight or square. Oh, I, <laughs> the scissors, I think, are easier for me than pulling up the trimmer every time. And a lot of times I use a ruler. I, I trim different ways, different times, depending on what's going on. This one has some edges that need to be trimmed. Now we have something to work with. Is that something else down there that needs? What is this? Let me trim the bottom off of that one. If 
I ever get a new printer, I'm going to make sure one of the first things I'm going to check for is that it prints borderless because trimming off the edges is not fun. And I would assume that mine probably does print borderless. I just don't know how to do it. Not from my iPad, <coughs> which is where I print from. Not from my iPad on the mobile app, on the HP mobile app. I keep waiting for, you know, if I say it often enough, I keep waiting to, for one of you to put the magic formula down in the comments. <laughs> oh. But I've asked several times when I've called HP for different reasons. I've asked um, people that I talk to from HP. None of them know how to do it. They really don't even know what I'm talking about. Too bad. All right, so what do we think? Maybe a, a pocket like kind of like this. All right, this is definitely lined, so I think we want to remove the backing. So let's not start with that one. Let's start with red. All right, so oh, it'll be cute. Yes, 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 yes. All right, so these will need to be straight-ish, and our cards can be about our pockets can be about this size. They'll, they can be floating pockets, or pockets that you clip in, or a tuck spot where we fold, um, glue them down on two edges. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so let's back a few of our pages. We don't need writing spots on them, so we can use stuff from the scrap bin, like this. get some new glue sticks down. I'm going to be doing all this. Okay, here's one in my travel bag. Okay, that should do for tonight. So how are all of you doing? We kind of just jumped right into things here. I seem to have a habit of doing that. I need to do a better job because I do care. I do. I am interested in what's going on on your desk and how you're uh, crafting in this biz such a busy time of year. I think a lot of us are just getting it in where we can get it in. This is drew glue dry a little bit. Put two over there and we'll glue a few more pages down. All right, it's always better to glue on the smaller size paper, which I did not do that time. So let's do it this time. This is the smaller one. It will get the glue. My Avery glue sticks work really well. I've never had any problems with them with, you know, I hear people complain sometimes about their glue sticks. Um, 
not holding up well. But this one is my glue stick of choice, and I never I like to be generous with my glue. Um, and never seem to have any trouble with it, even with you know, if I look back on journals that I've done um, ages ago. Seems to hold up pretty well. And if ever it doesn't, it's user error because I haven't got close enough to the edge or something like that. And then I just usually just stick in a little bit of um, art glitter glue. In life is good. Can we get probably four to six pockets out of a one page? about had it. I knew it wouldn't last long. Or here. Okay, not much going on here. Um, I think we're expecting some very rainy weather. It's been cool for a couple nights. Um, and I don't know what all the rain is gonna bring. Sometimes this time of year, uh, rainy weather brings in a cold front. It's already been down in the 30s um, for a few nights. I think tonight we're back in the 40s instead of the 30s, which works for me. I'm a Florida girl, and I do not love the cold. There, I said it. That's never going to change. I'm not a cold weather lover. There are cold weather things that I, you know, would like to consider when I, when I worked for Home Depot, one of our, um, vendors was from Canada because we did kitchen cabinet refacing and they built the cabinets in Canada. And one of the, you know, one of the people that I dealt with on the phone the most, his son worked at a place where you would spend the night in an igloo in a hotel of ice 
and you would take a dog sled ride down a river of ice. They were in Canada. A dog sled ride down a river of ice to watch the northern lights. So as much as I dislike cold weather, that sounds very intriguing. <laughs> um for something different, maybe for a day or two. Yeah. Anybody ever have an experience like that? Anybody ever take a dog sled ride down a river of ice to watch the Northern Lights? At one time, I put that on my bucket list, and I'm not sure anymore if, um, if that is still... something that I I would really want to do because I don't love the cold I don't love the cold but to see the northern lights it would be worth it it would be worth it and that dog sled ride down the river of ice come on now a dog sled ride down a river of ice please Yep, and then I would want to f immediately come home. I wouldn't want to stay. I've never been a skier. I did work at um, Mount Airy Lodge in Pennsylvania a couple of winters at a ski lodge. Um, some people laugh when they talk about that ski lodge. They call it a golf course. It was golf course in summertime. <laughs> Um, but I did work there and it was fun. I was young and things were fun and snowmobiles and all of that, but I've never been much of a skier. Nope. Never been on the ski slopes too much. And definitely, definitely, that would not be something I would uh, care to uh, <coughs> take up at this point in my life. I don't think so. <coughs> I know a lot of people love the snow. We had snow here a couple of years ago. The kids got very excited and... Um, I guess it was in January, but seldom, it seldom snows in Louisiana. And I'm from South Florida where it snows like never or very, very, very rarely, maybe once or twice in my lifetime. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> on this camera, but get a drink of water. Okay, that should get us started. They're wet still, but we're going to try to trim them anyway. I know it's the wrong thing to do. You know what, actually, let me put it on pause for a minute and let this dry for a few minutes and I'll be back. Okay, and I'm back and they have been drying for about another 15 minutes. So we should be able to go ahead and cut them. Now I did make little marks on the halfway point. I just folded it in half, made a little mark, folded it in half, made a little mark. So we should be able to get four floating pockets out of each page here. Let's do this. Okay. Right 
Underline. We may end up backing these with some writing space if they're going to be floating pockets. And then we may decide to glue some down as tucks and then they wouldn't really need writing space. <coughs> Okay. All right, we're a little on the quiet side. It is kind of late here. All right. All right, let's see what we can do. We only need 10. I have way too many here. One, two. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That probably leaves ten more, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. It'll save us 10 for something else. Should we mix them up a little bit? Should we put a yellow one in here? Music one in here. Okay. Save those for something else. All right, and the red lace. Let's do one together. Let's start with something neutral. Is it going to be okay to 
leave the rough edge of the lace there? I think so. And fabric scissors. All right, let's see how it goes. We could just glue it on the front, but that would give us a smaller pocket, or we could wrap it around to the back and cover the back with a writing space. Would that be better? Decisions, decisions. Do we need a piece of trim up there? At the top, maybe. Maybe we do. Trim. How about a little piece of white lace or cream colored lace? We would only need it as wide as the card. It wouldn't need to wrap around, be on the wrap around part. Okay, I didn't think that, I should have maybe, maybe made a prototype before I turned the camera on, right? We are winging it here, folks. We're winging it. I'm gonna use our Fabri-Tac. Glue the lace down. Okay, that's gonna be cuter. It would have been hard to glue the lace the white lace on once the other lace was on the card. All right, so again, do we want to, I could just glue it down. And then trim off the edges. Let's try it that way. And if we don't like it that way, we'll wrap it around. All right. How tall do we want it? Okay about here. I don't know why I felt we were wrapping it around, but this might be better. Might be easier to manage. And then we just trim off the excess. And we don't get the bulk on the back. Does that make sense? I think so. Okay, it might be cute.
Fabri-Tac is cold when you put it down, and as it dries, it stops being so cold. Anybody else notice that? Okay. And then to trim off the excess will be easy. And it'll be better than having all the bulk in the back. Yes, if you have a sewing machine and you um, sew, this could be even easier than the gluing, I would think. Unfortunately, I do have a sewing machine. Unfortunately, I am not a very good user of it. I don't know how to use it too well. I don't know. I just stay away from it because I don't understand it too well. I don't know it. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of cute. That'll make a cute little pocket and we can stuff it with a few things. And what can we add at the top for a little bling? Hmm, does it need any bling? Does it need any bling? I think it needs something. I guess I don't have to decide right now what it's getting. Maybe just another piece of the lace. That's cute. Okay, I'll go for that. All right, so there's our red lace pocket. And if we're up to it, we could put a little grommet with a ribbon or, or something up there. Very good. I think it's cute. Now let's do one with the blingy stuff. Where did that go? Mm -hmm. For the bling, we were going to have to remove the backing. Where's my, excuse my reach here. My little seam ripper. Do we need it? All right. Let's see what we'll use. Let's use the same kind of card. It's one of my bet's ledger papers, Spanish ledger papers. Okay. Maybe we remove that because that thing looks a little frayed up there. Yay! 
yeah, I really could have taken a dry run on this first before I turned the camera on. Um, but thank you guys for bearing with me and following along. I know that you're not going to have the same trim, but you might find something um, bright and shiny in your stash that, even if it's just lace, you might find something bright and shiny in your stash that will make you want to stop and make some floating, lacy floating pockets. All right. What are you all doing? What is on your desk? What is capturing your attention these days? Okay, so this is somewhere around here. It's going to get a little trim. Now I'm going to assume all the sequins is not going to fall off <laughs> when I cut it like that. Let's put this at the top and the black at the bottom. And we're going to glue up to about here. My pencil, I took my pencil with me to Lafayette. It's not on my desk. I need a new pencil or I need to go look for my travel bag. All right. Yes. A little bling bling. All right, um, it's really fun using digitals and, you know, and such. I like to do that, but I really like working with found items. This, again, was a little girl's Christmas dress. I took it apart last year. I knew I would use it for something sometime. I didn't use it last year, but I knew it would come in handy for something. And this time it's for this floating pocket. And here, what will we use at the top? It needs a topper. Another little piece of this. Oh, yes, I think so. Not a big piece, a little piece. Bling. black piece off. Straighten it up a little bit. Okay, what kind of hidden treasures do you have in your stash that could make something a little different, a little unique for a floating card? A floating pocket. Check your stash. If not, check your check your thrift store. All right, let's Rachel our corners. Do a little distressing. Trim off the edges. Put on our topper, and then we will be able to call it done.
and I will work on the other eight myself off camera. And probably show them to you next time that we're together on a video. Give it a trim. Cute. fabric and make ourselves a shabby little topper. Junk journaling. Find your junk. Let's use our junk. This could have sat here for another couple of years in that bag. Let's use our use up our stash. All right, that has a little piece that needs to come off, doesn't it? Either needs to get it either needs to come off or get glued down. Well, I hate to put glue on my fabric scissors, so I'm going to use these red ones. even though they don't work very well. <laughs> All right, here goes. Yuck. Right tool for the job. All right. And just another little nod to the bling bling. All right, and there you have it. We have this one and this one. Fun project. Okay, I think that's going to do it for me today. I thank you all for hanging in there and uh, keeping me company in the art room. I'm going to go back to what I am supposed to be doing, which is backing tags. I'm going to say goodbye for now, and I'll see you real soon. If I finish these between now and the next time I turn the camera on, I'll show you how they turned out. Thanks for watching.